subscribe, like, comment, and hit the notification bell. Hi friends, how are y'all? Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Brandy, and this video is not my typical video. Typically, I do videos centered around my health and fitness journey. I've been doing that for a few years, but every once in a while, I like to add something new. And I recently, like yesterday, got back from a 10-day vacation in Costa Rica. And so I thought it'd be fun to share exactly what a 10-day vacation in Costa Rica costs for me and my husband. So just a two-person vacation, that's how I'll share my numbers. And then at the end, we'll break it down how much that was per day per person. So I will say this is, we did not necessarily travel budget. We didn't necessarily travel high end. We just, you know, do what we want kind of deal. Not necessarily paying attention to money, but I am a more frugal person in general. So I'm always, you know, eyeballing prices, been on vacation. If I want a cocktail with every meal, I'm gonna have a cocktail. If I want dessert, I'll have dessert, that sort of thing. I don't hold back necessarily, but I don't also don't let myself feel like I'm taken advantage of. Like for instance, there was a place we went that had, you know, a $300 massage. Well, I didn't pay that and I'm not gonna pay that. So anyways, let's get started. So for my vacation, we left on Thanksgiving day here in the USA. So we left on Thursday, 11-23 of 2023 this year. And we returned December 2nd. So quite a long vacation and um, 10 days worked out nicely for us because it was three areas we wanted to visit. We visited, we flew in to San Jose International Airport. And from there, we immediately took a private van transport to Manuel Antonio. We were gonna go to the national park there. And so we only stayed two nights in that area and we stayed very close to the park. And then from Manuel Antonio, we headed, that was south from the airport on the west coast, the Pacific coast. If you know anything about Costa Rica, the west coast is the Pacific coast and the east coast is the Caribbean coast. And all the locals really talk about that a lot. Um, so I didn't necessarily think about it before traveling there, but Manuel Antonio is on the Pacific coast. So then we headed north and we went up to Santa Elena, which is in the area of Monte, Monte Verde, which is the Cloud Forest Biological Reserves. I think they call them biological reserves. It's a reserve. It's not the same as a national park, but it's very, very similar. And there we stayed three nights, and that was also by private van transport. And then for our final destination of the La Fortuna Arenal location, we did the Jeep Boat Jeep Transport, which is very popular. So those are the three areas we went to. And in the final location, sorry, we stayed for four nights. So all in all, we had a total of nine nights and 10 days. So let's break it down. I'm not gonna break it down by area because I don't really see the benefit of that, but instead I'm gonna break it down by cost category. And so overall for the total of our vacation, there is six budget categories. I broke it down into. There will be a seventh for us because we are pet parents, but I'll leave that separate for the end because I know it doesn't pertain to everyone watching this. But the first category I did was airfare. And in the airfare, I included the baggage fees and the seat upgrade fees. We flew Spirit because it was substantially cheaper than other airlines. I'm talking like half the cost. I think the flights were like 750 for two people. And it was a pretty good flight. Like the layovers we flew from DFW, that's Dallas Fort Worth International Airport, into Orlando, Florida International M Airport, MCO. And the layover there was only like less than two hours for all of all legs coming and going. So that was nice. And then we flew from Orlando directly into San Jose, the international airport, kind of like in the center of Costa Rica. If you look at a map of Costa Rica, it's right there in the center, right there. So the flights were about $750. And since it was Spirit, Spirit it's actually cheaper to check your baggage and you get more weight and size. So that's what we did. 
So the flights for two people and two checked baggage was about $750. And then we, my dog. And then we also upgraded some seats. I like bid on premium seats and we won and whatnot. So our total airfare cost was $816.26. If you see me looking to the side, I'm looking at my computer. So, so all in all, I thought that was great for the airfare cost because because fun story, back to a few years ago at my 40th birthday, we were actually planning to go to Costa Rica to the extent that I reserved one of our accommodations. And then when I went to book the flights, my husband's passport was expired. So I know the airfare that we were booking several years ago was more like $1,500 for two people. So $816 for two people is a great cost for airfare going to um, San Jose from DFW. There's also direct flights from DFW, which would have been nice. But like I said, they were over double. And in my head, spending four more hours in the airports in a plane doesn't justify playing double the airfare. At least not to me. And right now in this stage of my life, I'm a little frugal. I mentioned that, right? <laughs> and spirit is not bad as long as you know what you're getting into. Weigh your bags. Really pay attention to your measurement of your bags. It's cheaper to buy your check bags and your carry-on bags at the time you purchase your tickets. It's cheaper to even buy them. If you don't buy them when you purchase your tickets, buy them when you're doing the online check-in. So just know the game. Have your own water, have your own snacks, you know. Their food's actually pretty reasonable priced compared to like airport food, So, but you do have to pay with a credit card. They don't accept cash, FYI. So my second category was accommodations. And like I said, at the beginning, we stayed in three different locations. I'll show you a little on the map. So from the airport center right here, we went down here south of Capos is Manuel Antonio. And that is where we stayed because that's the largest national park and most popular in all of Costa Rica. It's the park where, you know, you're going to see the monkeys. You're going to see the sloth. So we headed there first. And then after two nights there, we went north. In that region's the Central Pacific and South Nicoya region. But then after that, we headed north up here into Guanacosta and Northern Nicol Nicolonia region, I believe is how you say that, to Santa Elena. Santa Elena is also known as like the Monte Verde region. Monte Verde is the region. Santa Elena is the town. That's kind of confusing when you're looking on line but specifically we went to that area because of the cloud forest there's only one percent of the that ecosystem in the entire world so I, I just had to experience the cloud forest and it did not disappoint and then after three nights there we headed east to la well northeast to la fortuna and the highlight of la fortuna is arenal volcano and also there's a lot to do it's very touristy um, they have a lot of thermo spots. So in those locations, we I would say we stayed fairly budget. To me, it was fairly budgeted. Um, to me, it was fairly budget-friendly accommodations. There was definitely more high-end. There was definitely cheaper if you're okay with staying in a hostels. And there's all ranges of ages that stay in hostels. And they even have private bathrooms. So it's not like your typical hostel, although there's those two. But we don't stay in hostels. That's not my jam. But if you do, you can definitely cut down the accommodations. But our total accommodation was $907.71. And that was for nine nights, right? Nine nights. And I'll break it down a little bit and just tell you a little bit about each hotel. So the first one we stayed at was Las Posado, La Posada Jungle Hotel. And this was a no frills hotel. It, the property is gorgeous. It really has like trails when you walk through and it's very beautiful pool, um, lots of floral and fauna everywhere. You really do feel like you're in the jungle. I would say it's a smaller, it is a smaller boutique hotel. We were on the second floor, had a great view. We woke up to the sound of howler monkeys and nature. It had AC, so that was good. The only thing is the room was a little like musty, but it's an old hotel, you know, it doesn't, it's not a five-star resort. So it wasn't anything we couldn't get over. Shower was great, bed was great, that sort of thing was perfect. But the highlight of this hotel, it was literally 
you step out of the main dining area of the hotel and you were, I don't know, 50 walking steps away from the front of the park. And I really wanted that because the park can get really full later in the day. You do have to pre-buy your tickets to the park, which we did. And our time slot was for 7 a.m. So my main thing in Manuel Antonio was just the park. I wasn't looking forward to seeing the town. I'm not a huge beach person. That's a lot of the draw down there. My thing was we have to be the first ones in the park before all the tourists bus come in and get in. So that hotel was wonderful and two nights at that hotel were $270.52. Not bad at all, right? So like $125, a little over $125 a night and it did include breakfast the next day. However, I will say that was expensive for the area or mid-range for the area. You could definitely find hotels that were $50 and $60 a night, but we, in this case, wanted to pay for convenience. Okay, the second stop was our most expensive per night, and it was called the La Casa de la Montana. And this location in Santa Elena, I think was perfect. It wasn't inside town, but it was just tiny enough outside town where you could take a taxi and it not be odd, but yet it wasn't expensive. But then if you wanted to tr walk the 20 minutes into town, you could do that as well. So I really, really liked the location. And there was stuff close by that you could eat at at night if you didn't want to walk, you know, the 20 minutes to town. There was still a few little restaurants in Soda, but this place was gorgeous. When I say you were in the jungle, you were in the jungle. And it's a family run establishment. The husband and wife live there and so do the kids, the adult kids with their families. And there's quite a few rooms. We stayed in a room that had all glass front looking out to the jungle. We say, saw some amazing birds and wildlife straight out of our room. This area does not have AC, but that was common for the area because you are in, more in the mountains. And so it's definitely cooler, definitely cooler at night. So when you open those windows at night, the breeze was fabulous. You did not need an AC at all. So there for the three nights, we paid $383.82. They did have us pay cash at the time of check-in, which wasn't a big deal, but when we booked it on booking.com, I got a message and he said, okay, I'll cancel this when you arrive. And I was like, huh? Surely there's miscommunication. And then he explained, I'll just pay, you'll pay me when you get there. So luckily he let me know that I needed to have cash and I did. So that was three nights there. It was, um, we didn't get the best sleep at that hotel because it was so loud. Since you're in the jungle and in the mountains, they get what they call the Christmas winds. And oh my goodness, it sounded like we were in a tornado, but it wasn't just like us, like even locals in Costa Rica, but they don't live in Monteverde. When they found out we came from there, they were like, isn't it so loud? And I was like, oh my goodness, it is loud. <laughs> so even the, the locals from other regions think Santa Elena, Monteverde, at this particular time, season, it's a loud place to sleep. So we did not, unfortunately, sleep very well there but it wasn't due to the accommodations, it was due to the weather. <laughs> so we made it to Monte Verde, Santa Elena. We're staying in this cabin in the jungle. Like there's a main house up there, but isn't it so cute? This is like just our room. Come on, focus phone. Like there, it's all windows. And you come in, like you're literally in the jungle. Like how cool. Like this is the place I'm scared to see the cat. But got an airplane plant. I think, wait, are these called airplane yeah, plants? It's, airplane plant. it's so neat. Oh, wonder what we'll see out here. And then here oh, is, the monkeys. <laughs> here is the room. Very, very nice. It's rainy today. And they gave us a bottle of wine and a little couch. I like the paintings, they're like bright. We have a little microwave, a little refrigerator, and then your bathroom. And here's the key. You get to see outside in a little skylight. There's like some really cool rooms here too. Like there's a lot of different options. We got like the mid grade option. And the third place we stayed, we actually stayed in this apartment. It was a fabulous apartment. It was Apartamentos Equipados Raya del Volcano. 
And this was like two blocks outside of the city center of La Fortuna. If you've ever been to La Fortuna, there's, it's a, it's a little city on like, or town on a grid structure. And so we were like just two blocks off the main grid on the, what I consider the nicer part of town. So, so that worked out well for us because I didn't know what direction was the nicer part. I just knew we wanted to be close to town, but not in town because town can be loud. We stayed at that place for four nights and it was $248. So very, very affordable there. And the accommodations had the best bed, air conditioner, like all the amenities. It really was very Americanized and a very, very nice place to stay. I highly recommend it if you're staying in La Fortuna. Great, great location. So this is our hotel in Arenal, La Fortuna. It's a little uh, apartment actually, because we're here for four nights. Very affordable, four nights was like 250 bucks. Not bad. And she has like all the cutest little seats. It's like very artistic. And you got coffee plates and all that. A little Pura Vida. I guess it connects. I don't really know what that door is to. <laughs> Cleaning supplies, I guess. So overall, $908 for nine nights in the hotels. That comes down to about 100 bucks a night right at it. I think that's pretty dang good. You keep, um, when I first started looking up Costa Rica, the thing I kept hearing is, oh my goodness, it's so expensive. Oh my goodness, it's so expensive. So I really just think it's all subjective on what you find expensive. And I think a lot of people assume that since it's in Latin America, that it'll be really cheap. And that's not the case, you know, but I don't expect that nor assume that to me. It's a tourist area. I knew it wasn't going to be like $20 a night accommodations type deal. So not like if you go to like Honduras or Nicaragua or somewhere like that. So, okay. My third category is transportation. And in this category, I included Ubers, taxis, tips for the drivers. And then a big chunk of my transportation was private transfers. So our total transportation was $889.06. But of that, $750 included three private transfers and a Jeep boat Jeep transfer. So if I wouldn't have done private transfers, it would have only been $450. So you would have saved like $300. But I chose to do private because then I got to set the pickup time. And along the way, we had an hour to ask the driver to stop wherever we would like for sightseeing. So if we would have been with a group, we'd have been dropping other people off. I wouldn't have been able to pick my pickup time. So it was just for the 300 extra dollars, it was somewhere I was willing to spend it. We did a private transfer from, and we used the company I Love to Travel. Highly, highly recommend. They're so professional. They're on time. All the drivers were very, very friendly, love what they're doing, given the information. They were at the airport with my name on the sign, um, emailing back and forth. They confirmed every leg of my transfer two days in advance. So highly, highly recommend. I love to travel. I will leave the link in the description. And they were the most affordable uh, transportation company I found while I was researching as well. So the first private transfer we did was from the airport to the Manuel Antonio. And then two days later, we did Manuel Antonio to Santa Elena. When we went to Santa Elena to La Fortuna, we didn't do a private transfer there because it involves a ferry and it was like crazy ridiculous. So we did what they know as Jeep boat Jeep, but there's no Jeep involved. It's just a tourist van. And then you get on a boat, cross the lake, Lake Arenal and then you go to your next destination. Wasn't bad at all though. And that one's shared, but we only had one other couple with us and we got dropped off like pretty early. So really, really simple. And then the final private transfer was from La Fortuna back to the airport. All of the private uh, transports were about three to four hours. Costa Rica, even though it's not that big, the roadways are in the mountain and there's not that many like direct roads and highways. So traveling short distances just take a while. Now you could also um, definitely rent a car and it would probably be, we spent $900 on transportation. If you rented a car for nine days, I think when I looked it was like four or 500 including all the fees. So it's definitely cheaper to rent a car. We chose not to do that because 
We were unsure how the roads would be. We knew we'd be flying in and the evening, it gets dark there at like 5.15, no lie. It's like pitch black by like 5.30. So we didn't want to put that stress on ourselves and to be honest, my husband and I, our best qualities is not road trip travel together. So we just opted for the transport. It was easier. We didn't regret it at any point. We used taxis. In La Fortuna, they have Uber. It was so freaking cheap. Like I'm talking a dollar or two to go everywhere. So, and we walked a lot. It's vacation, you know? I like to be active. So that was that. Okay. Another category is the activities. And in the activities, we didn't hire any like group type tours. We didn't do that, but we did a lot of ticketed events like entry to the waterfall, entry into, you know, the nature reserve. So all in all, we did 10 activities and it cost us $981.31. It's so funny. All my categories are right around a thousand each so far. That's just how they worked out. But the activities, $981, like I said. And let me just run you through the activities we did real quick, just so you know what we chose to do. And we chose these activities based upon our likes and then also like what we've done in the past on past vacations to other locations. We didn't want it to be too repetitive. So we went to the Manuel Antonio National Park. That's only like $36 for two tickets. But then we also hired a guide for another $40 and then we tip the guide $10. So it gets more expensive. The guide, yes and no, if I recommended. It, I guess it depends. Ours had 30 years of experience, but I do feel like he walked really quickly. He went to what he knew was there. A lot of the animals, they live in the same area. Um, I definitely think you could find them without a guide because there's big groups of people in that park and we're, they're all staring at the same thing. But the guide does give you the cool photos through his lens and whatnot. I would do it again with a guide. I wish I would have spoke up with our guide and told him, slow down. I want to see more. He really just like, let's focus on a monkey. Let's focus on a sloth. And that was it. So I don't recommend, recommend our guide. And his name was Wilbert. <laughs> but I still tipped him. So he was nice. And so then that was the only thing we did in Manuel Antonio. And then once we were in Santa Elena, we decided the first night we were there, we did a three-in-one tour at Don Juan. Don Juan had a coffee, chocolate, and night walk tour. And we did that. And it was $90 for two people. That was really cool. Um, I've done chocolate tours before and coffee tours. It's okay. It was the night walk I was really liking. And I wish we would have done a different night walk tour. I think it would have been better. But all in all, it was really nice. And the kid who did it was super friendly. And then the next day, we had our canyoning tour with Finica Modelo. And this is where you rappel down the waterfalls. Oh my goodness. The advertisements did not do the intensity justice. It was so freaking scary. I've skydived. I've... I feel like I'm fairly adventurous and will do most anything. Like I've never turned down a activity, but if I would have known what I was getting into, I probably wouldn't have signed up for this one. Glad I did it, but I don't think we'll be doing it on any future vacations. I'm scared of heights and it was very intense and it was intense for like two hours. And I'm not quite sure. I don't remember exactly how much that one cost us, but I think it was like 130 for two people. Again, not horrible. And then we went into a cloud forest. We didn't go to the main one, which is cloud forest. We went to, it's called Monteverde cloud forest. Instead, we opted to go to the Reserva Santa Elena cloud forest, which I'm happy we did that. And two tickets were right around $70 for a guided tour there. And then that afternoon we did a skywalk, which is the hanging bridges. And we did it in Selma tour park. There's a lot of tour, there's a lot of like theme parks you can do the hanging bridges. I'm glad we picked this one because it was like super dead that day because it had been raining, but we didn't mind the rain. And after the hanging bridges, we did a sloth tour. They have like a sloth um, rescue on site. We figured at this point, we'd already seen a sloth that was like really far away. So we're like, we're guaranteed to see them close up. And I'm glad I did that because they were moving and they were super cute. And then another big activity we did was Tabagone. Tabacone 
day spa and we just bought a day pass it was 168 dollars for two people and you get 10 a.m to 10 p.m to go into the eco spas and this is the nicest one in the area so that's what we picked and that is actually the resort i had booked years ago for my 40th birthday but unfortunately when i went to book this trip they only had the honeymoon suite left and it was like 1700 dollars. so i was like we're not doing that so that's why we had a bad day pass I would recommend doing it, especially it's come and go. So we actually left during the day, midday, and went and did a hike at the RNL Volcano. And that entry was like $50 for two people, but it was very nice. And then we also did a nature trail walk uh, right in the middle of La Fortuna, Bogorin Trails. It was, you know, I don't even know, maybe like another $60 or so. And then we went to La Fortuna Waterfall, which was $36 entry for two people. And that was all 10 of our tours. So right around $1,000 for 10 tours, um, two people. So on average, it's like 50 bucks a person per tour. So not bad. And again, these aren't like tours where the tour bus we got on with a lot of people. It's just the tickets to the events. Although the Don Juan's called Don Juan Tour, you know, we showed up ourselves, we were with a group. So the activities were exhausting, but and everything in Costa Rica, I believe, is ticketed. There's very little to do that's not ticketed and free. Um, we did go to a free rope swing. There's free eco thermal spas, but we had done the paid one, so we didn't actually go to the free one. Um, obviously you can walk around town for free, but other than that, there's a ficus tree, which is very magnificent and Monte Verde, Santa Lina area for free. But other than that, nothing's free. <laughs> okay. So the fifth, if I can count, yes, the fifth category is food and drink. And this includes stopping for coffee in the morning getting a cock afternoon cocktail, dinner, dessert, anything food related, even picking up, you know, soda and water to bring back to our room. So all in all, so far, that was our biggest category. And it was $1,081.54. Not too bad. I will say five, yes, five mornings our breakfast was included. So we didn't have to pay for breakfast. So that was a big money saver. That was at our first two hotels, breakfast was included. And there were several other days, like if we had a big breakfast, like a little bit later, then we don't necessarily, wouldn't necessarily have lunch and we'd have like a early dinner, late lunch type of deal. So there was definitely days when we only really had two meals. And then there were other days where we had a total of three meals, but it was very few days where we ate like three big meals like if we had three meals in a day it was like because we only got pastries at breakfast and a sandwich at lunch and then we'd have a bigger dinner so that's just the way it works out quite a bit on vacation with us i feel like we always typically end up eating two meals a day rather than three but and then as far as what we ate i kind of gave that a little tidbit there we some mornings would eat pastries versus having a full-on huge breakfast um, for lunch, we would often eat at the sodas and at the sodas, that's what they call like just their little local out. It's like outdoor open air dining places. They're everywhere. There's so many places to eat over there. It's insane. I honestly don't see how they all stay in business because they didn't seem very uh, populated when we were there, but we weren't in high, high season, high tourism season. But anyhow, yeah, the sodas, you get like what's known as casada. And so you get rice, beans, plantains, typically a tortilla, maybe some queso or cheese wedge or something. And then you pick your protein. It's usually a fish, a beef, or a chicken. Some of these places were magnificent. Some of them, I couldn't eat the beef at all. Like I'm talking like could not even cut it with a steak knife. So it really just depends on where you go but it's like they're like $12 a plate and it's a lot of food. They also really love pizza over there. We ended up having pizza two different times. Both of them were great, like wood fire grills, very good. We had sushi one night, that was really good, especially sushi and they put the plantain on the top. They're gonna have to start doing that in the US. Um, where else did we eat? We had a falafel bar in Manuel, highly recommend, it was so yummy. So that's really it, yeah. 
had ice cream. There was a great coffee shop and uh, La Fortuna. So, you know, we did a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. My husband had steak one night, so that was a little more expensive night. Our most expensive meal was dinner in, in La Fortuna, but it was like $82, but we got two cocktails, a, sal a salad, an appetizer, he got steak, and I got an entree. If we would have ordered that in DFW, like my area where I'm from, it would have easily been like two, $250, and it was only $82. So when people say it's expensive, it may be expensive for a Latin American country, but it's not anywhere near our prices. I That's how I feel overall with the food for sure. So $1,081 for food and drinks. Now I will say we never went out and like drank heavy or anything like that. I think the most cocktails we ever had at a meal was my husband may have had two. I never had over two at a meal. So the final category is souvenirs and gifts. We don't buy too much stuff when we're traveling. I'll show you one thing. One thing we do pick up is spoons, travel spoons. And this isn't the one from there. This one's actually one from New York City. I gave my Meemaw in 1997. She had it framed and gave it back to me. When she passed away, I inherited it. And then that one is actually from my honeymoon and I had it framed to match that one. I'll show you my, my other spoon rack in a minute. But anyway, so we buy spoons, we buy shot glass, we buy magnets. Um, got me a shirt. <laughs> I love it. Isn't it cute? A little sloth. But it's all really soft too. Um, my husband bought some coffee. We bought my in-laws like a pair of socks, a magnet, some chocolate. Bought some co-workers some chocolate. So no big purchases at, at all. Sometimes we like to get like some type of souvenir artwork. Um, we just didn't this time, nothing like necessarily caught our eye, like we really felt like we needed for the house, so we skipped it. We do buy a Christmas ornament as well. So all in all, the souvenirs were $176.94. Not bad at all, so a couple hundred bucks on like, you know, little things here and there. So the grand total for 10 days in Costa Rica for two people was $4,852.82. So what do you all think of that? Like, do you consider that budget-friendly travel, um, not budget-friendly? I'm not sure. Like I said, we don't, I didn't necessarily plan this trip with budget in mind, but I also knew it wasn't gonna be like one of our Italy trips that's like way more money than this. Like when we went, we'd done a big trip to Italy before and I saved for like all year for it. But if you divide that by two, that's $2,426 per person. And if you divide that per day, it's about 250 bucks a day per person. So when I think of that, I'm like, hmm, then that seems kind of expensive. But you gotta remember, I'm including flights, transportation. Oh, one thing I didn't say about transportation, it also includes our Uber to and from the airport. Typically we would park at the airport, but the parking was full. So like at the last second, I had to find an Uber. So anyhow, it worked out. The only, like I said, there was a seventh bonus category that most people, well, I don't know about most people, a lot of people will not have. And that is we had to pay for a pet sitter. Luckily, we have a great family friend son that has helped us out for years now. He comes, stays at our house with the dogs. It's wonderful. And that cost us an additional $500. We pay him like 50 bucks a day. He actually really enjoys it. He likes, you know, he lives at home with his parents. So when he gets to come over here, it's like, I guess a little vacation. <laughs> so anyways, if you add that to it, what's the new total? So if you add in the pet costs, then we spent $5,352. So. That is it, friends. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I just like to be transparent about things. If you have any other questions about Costa Rica, I feel like I'm an expert now. Not really. We um, we did enjoy our trip quite a bit. If I had to pick one area, I would say to go back to, it's definitely Santa Elena, Cloud Forest. That was the highlight area for me. Uh, I probably would stay less time in La Fortuna, we, in which we actually stayed there the longest. Um, there is a lot to do in La Fortuna, don't get me wrong.
but it is all like group tour activities, like zip lining, hanging bridges, going to the waterfall, going to all these locations on a big tour bus. And you can do all that in Monte Verde as well for cheaper. And it's, I don't know, I just preferred Monte Verde cloud forest area. I also maybe would stay a night longer in Manuel Antonio, our first stop, because we only got to enjoy the park there. And there are nice beaches, but my husband and I, we're not huge beach people, so that's why I didn't dedicate too much time to there. But I do think it would have been nice to have one more night so we could enjoy one day on the beach, which we did go to the beach in the park. But anyhow, that is it, friends. I will be back with another Costa Rica video. I am going to do what to pack and what to leave at home on your trip to Costa Rica. Before we left, I watched a lot of these videos and some of the tips I agree with and some of them, I should have left it at home. So tune back if you wanna see that video. Bye.